Heidi's only viable in NQ mod. Yeah, well, of course. This is this is being played with NQ mod. There's my iron. This is why I tech mining. We'll grab animal husbandry because it's really nice to know where your uh, your uh, pasture resources are. No barbs in there. We'll head back. Let's do a little bit more scouting in here. Uh, another luxury over here. Pretty weak city over there, but sometimes uh, planting more cities is more faith. Let's grab uh, four turns. Four turns to grow. Four turns on our archer. That's pretty good for us. Getting two archers out early isn't going to be bad versus AI or uh, anything else either. And we'll move to here to hide and we'll wait for another worker. Yeah. Alright, we'll just fortify. We don't really care what's going on there. Worker back. Um, does it matter where we go? It actually does matter where we go. So we're going to move into the truffles. We're gonna. So I have two options. I can bring it back over here to start improving these tiles when I can or I can bring it to the truffles. The thing about the truffles is it's on a plains tile. Whenever you have a plains a forest on a plains, if you chop the forest, you get a short time boost for chopping forest and you get no change in the yield uh, because of the way planes work. So when I chop this, I'll get, I think, eight production uh, and then I'll lose no no uh, no food off this tile. All right, let's keep looking around here. Again, we're looking, uh, look, it's a barb camp back there. Okay, I don't want, if I leave this guy here or move it to here, the spearman will slam into me and I don't want that. So we're going to move this guy back and I'm also going to relabel this guy uh, so that I can remember that he has uh, movement terrain or he can he can move through forests and shit like that with no penalty. We'll start chopping this and what this is going to do is provide a bunch of overflow for my first settler. All right, got to keep an eye on this guy every single turn. Yeah, Barbarian's being annoying. We can move to this hill. He can't get to us. That's why we're going to move there. What we want him to do is to walk in range of our city so we can use the city shot to do damage to him with the archer so I don't have to take a shit ton of damage. On uh, his three turn chops and, and uh, standard. Early game chopping is a really powerful way to uh, enhance your production if you have the workers to do it. The other thing I'd like to do is I tend to rename workers. Uh, I don't think the AI returns workers, but when you first uh, fight versus other players, if you they when they capture one of your workers in war, they'll have the option to give that worker back to the city-state for an influence boost, and I really don't want to have those workers put somewhere dangerous. Um, yeah, the other benefit of chopping truffles is it will be more likely to... Ex um, the, the way the cultural borders expand in this game is rough terrain, hills, forests, across rivers are slower to expand to than uh, they would be otherwise. So chopping this will make this a higher priority, a lower culture cost for my city to expand there, and thus a higher priority. All right, we just grew. Um, I want to work settlers now, and let's talk about settlers. Let's look at this. Right now I have 10 production if I work this settler. And remember, you can't starve when you're building settlers. So I work this, uh, work this silver over here, I'm now up to 11 production. And if I work this sheep, I'm up to 12 production. Um, I could also test for potentially losing that food. If I lose a food and gain a hammer, uh, I don't have any tiles to test that with. Would I lose? I may lose that production tile. We might be getting some of this food. There is a formula for it, but I didn't bother to memorize the formula. Um, all right. Keep an eye on there. Let's move to here. And we'll move to there. The goal is to kill this as it comes closer. We're going to start our settlers, very early settlers. But we want to get as much production as possible for this. Pantheon just went. Production and faith from fishing boats is a very solid one. Alright, uh, he's being annoying. This barbarian is being annoying. We do have two horses. So we can look now. Does this change it to 13? No, it doesn't. So we'll keep working the gold so we get the yield on that. This is one of the benefits of having early silver. Um, I need to improve that tile. And I kind of want this barbarian to come a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up one tile, take a shot at him. He, what he'll do is he'll slam on the horse next turn into my into my uh, guy. We'll fortify on this tile. Tech-wise, let's look at what we have. We're going to need camping tech at some point. Other than that, I don't really need a uh, calendar for uh, wine. So let's queue up calendar for now. Probably quicker is actually going to be trapping. We'll queue up trapping. Versus the AI, I like to get the construction fairly early. It helps uh, for any of their annoying early rushes. Keep an eye on our spearmen. Uh, we chopped this tile. I'm going to go, I'm going to move to here. I'm going to chop the silver. The borders will help expand to that. And I want to get a silver online relatively soon. The other thing I could do is improve this iron tile. That would be fairly useful. 
Um, might even do that first because I'm going to be working this iron the entire time. The thing is, I want luxuries and happiness by the time I'm ready to actually settle those cities. This actually improved my this the the horses improved my city quite a lot. That's three horse tiles. Unfortunately, oh, actually only one of them is on my fresh water. So, bonus hammer is one, two, four, eight, and twelve. That's food conversion. Yeah. All right, can't shoot him from here, unfortunately. I guess where was I? This guy was here. Yeah. Okay, this is fine. All right, that's China. Let's trade him embassy for some. Oh, he doesn't have any gold. We just swap embassy. That's for fine. Yeah. Quite a ways away, thankfully. Maybe he'll. Uh, maybe a spearman. Yeah, there just comes a spearman. This is where I want him to be. I want him to be in range of my city. I'll back up with this guy for two reasons. The first, having a unit in a in a city, uh, it can boost the combat strength, so you get a slightly stronger city shot. The second thing is, when I'm in a city, I heal at 25 per turn as opposed to 20 per turn, so I'll heal a little bit faster when I'm ready to leave again. So we'll take our shot. I want to make sure I get max experience off this, so I'll take both the archer shots first before taking the city shot to kill it. Sometimes I'll leave a barb up entirely just to farm it for experience, but I'm not doing that right now because I do actually want that barb out of my way. All right, we're going to chop this, again, just to speed production. I'm a little dubious of moving on to this tile because there's a camp up here somewhere, and I'm not quite ready to clear the camp. There's a downside to chasing camps in the early game. The downside is that uh, your units should be doing other things. They should be scouting, escorting settlers, and stealing workers, and it's going to clear a barbed camp will take you two or three or four or five turns, depending on where it is and how long you have to walk up there, and it's a waste of your time. So don't do that. Alright, Pantheon pick, thanks to Pieties, Quick uh, Religion, and, and Maya. Um, we have a very solid capital for, um, so really have a choice. Okay, so when you hit your Pantheon, what are you picking and why? Um, generally, you want to match your Pantheon with your resources, clearly. Um, mostly in your capital, but to a lesser degree, your expands as well, especially if you're settling on a resource, like silver, for example. It can be very powerful. If I picked up a silver Pantheon, I was going to settle all these silver cities, and that would be great. But I'm not going to be settling silver cities. I really have um, one that sticks out to me right now. Culture is incredibly powerful. And often when you open Piety... Uh, in the NQ mod, you'll have enough faith per turn from the various policies you get in Piety. You get one from opening it, and then you get um, you get an additional one faith and one culture per shrine by taking organized religion. You get an additional one faith per turn in your capital from Mandate of Heaven. So in the early game, you can, especially if you're building shrines in your expands, you can very quickly uh, get a lot of faith per turn. So you can do a pantheon that isn't necessarily faith-based. So there's really two right now that are in my mind that I'm interested in. And still get a religion, I'm saying. So you get a non-faith-based pantheon while still getting a religion. Um, the first is deer and sheep culture is extremely powerful. Um, it, it just gives you plus one culture on any sheep or deer tile. I'll have three deer tile in my capital, although I only have one immediately available. Excuse me, three sheep tile in my capital and, and two deer tile. And I'm going to be working those tiles. One of the reasons why it's so powerful is it gives you that yield immediately before you've improved the tile, and it's a tile that you tend to work in the early game. So that's my first pick. That's probably that's probably what I'm going for, but I'm not entirely sure. The other one that I can do in here is called Ancestor Worship, and that is one. Uh, it gives me one culture from shrines and one faith from monuments, and I know I'm going to be building those. So that's pretty damn good too. Yeah, I have a four sheep down here, and the thing is, I don't have a lot of sheep and deer in my expanse, and I do have a lot of. And I'm going to be building very early the monuments and the uh, shrines. So really, my oh, I have another sheep here. So really it is how soon will I be working these tiles and how many versus what will I get in the late game. So if I settle four cities, and four cities total, like including my capital, that's going to be eight faith and eight culture for my pantheon. If I settle it, just if I take the culture pantheon, I'm going to be getting, what do we decide, six culture in here maybe one culture there. So it's basically seven culture versus four faith and four culture. I think I'm going to go for the faith one. I'm a little bit wor worried about uh, the AI's ability to produce faith. So I'm going to choose this one here to get that extra faith per turn right now. And again, the, the comparison is looking at something that, you know, is in the future versus right now for some of it anyways. All right, we're going to pick up organized religion as piety. That's the, the one you go into next as piety. And this guy's healing. I'm going to move down this way. I want to make sure this camp is going to be open or not in my way when I'm ready to settle that stuff because there could be barbs spawning around here. Just radar from time to time. And we'll keep chopping this tile. All right. Should have gone to that tile. It would have been better to where I want to go. All right. I'm still waiting on this fucking worker. He's taking his sweet time. So I didn't hang out there to begin with, but 
I guess I am hanging out there. Let's chop this. I hate chopping Tundra tiles, but it's a Tundra Lux tile. On Tundra Lux tile, you're going to, in your in range of your cities, even if you never work the tile, you need to chop it so you can trade the resource away. Alright, let my guy heal. Go for trapping because it's a happiness tech. I need another worker. There's the worker I want. Hello, worker. Yoink. Alright. Settler out shortly. Okay, let's radar over here. There is a unit there. Now, I could just say that's fine. Could improve this mine. Could improve my luxury. Could chop out the deer. I think the deer is uh, forest plains, right? So I get the production yield, the production boost. Takes so long to improve tiles in this uh, on, the, on a standard. So so there is a, probably another bar. It could be the camp right there. And if it's the camp, it's even worse shape for me. And if it's a camp, it can attack me from there. Okay, so I would love to improve the uh, the silver, but I'm not going to right now. My concern is that if this is the camp, the barb... I, I can look if it's a camp, I suppose. Let's do that first. Now, that's the Chinese scout. Now, that's fine, then. We're going to go improve the the copper the, the thing. Why can't this be a camp, Aqua? It's not on a tile yield. It's not on a, tile, a resource with a yield. Why do you guys think it can't be the camp? Oh, camp notifier. Oh, good call. Yep, there is now, they changed that last patch in the NQ mod. Now everybody gets notifications where the camps are. So you guys are correct. Alright, so this is as good as moving on to the iron in terms of the overall production it's going to give me for building uh, settlers. It also is slightly better in terms of getting the happiness online so I can settle cities. I'm going to do a very similar thing here. I'm going to start moving this, work, this uh, worker over. Barb could spawn here and move there. So we'll move here instead with the worker. I'm going to put the spearman right back to steal another guy when I can. Um, this is a tough call where I want to settle a city. That's much more defensible. It gets, lets me get another city in here. It's going to piss off the AI though. It might piss off the AI to settle both cities. I think I'm going to go there though. So we'll wait here just to escort the settler through. Uh, I want to see this camp. Okay, there it is. Now I'll put a shot into it and be done. First settler out next turn. Let's queue up some more settlers and go. Yes, let us work together. We're friendly. Okay. All right, trapping done. Let's pick up calendar also for the luxury. After that, we're going to go uh, for the tech for um, composite bowman. You can heal here. Settler is going to make his direct path for there, which comes through here. I'll bring this worker this way. I'm probably going to end up using the worker to chop the forest. All right. We're going to go the worker here. We're going to put him here so he doesn't get stolen by the bar, but I'm not going to walk him all the way back to the cap. Uh, I'll choose to promote rough terrain or open terrain here. I'm worried that I'll be fighting the Polynesians after I after I uh, settle some cities. So I'm going to take rough terrain promotion to help with uh, terrain down there. And I'm going to move to this tile here. This does two things. It prevents it. So if a barb now, the barb, this, this guy's not on a hill, so he can't shoot me. I'm on a hill. I can shoot him. So I'm going to shoot him from here. Additionally, if a barb spawns now like a spearman, it can't like slam the spearman into my guy and uh, shoot me with the, the archer. So uh, so I get the defensive bonus from the, the, the hill. I get to shoot him in a position where I'm like less likely to die, and I'm closer to my own land if I need to retreat. So that's why I'm going to choose that position to shoot him from. It's a scout archer. He can do both. This guy can just fortify here. Um, Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go here, and the goal is if a barb spawns and they start slamming into me, at least I'm gonna be able to fortify on the tile that I'm gonna walk through. Okay. AI doesn't steal uh, settlers apparently, so good. That bonus areas when I wasn't looking. Oh, I did that earlier, didn't I? Okay. Again, let's let's shoot the camp. I want this camp gone. Normally, I'll keep a camp to farm potentially, but not versus the AI. It's too much military early. We'll go here. Next turn, perhaps we'll move. I guess we could move here with the spear. 
set up for, uh, it's still not visible, right? Still not visible. Okay. Wait. Okay. You should show how to cube text. It's really simple. You just hit shift. So when you, I didn't even think to explain that. This is why we over explain, right? So let's say I want to go calendar, masonry, and construction, which is kind of what I want to do. You can just queue it up. You just hold down sh uh, shift as you left click. All right. Let's go here. Settler to here. I don't want member Bar could spawn here and steal my settler if I moved it. If I moved my, uh, if I didn't have it escorted. So we're gonna stay right where we are. We're gonna kill this camp. Uh, this, if that stupid Chinese scout is around, the AI might take the camp. I guess I can live with that though. A kind gesture. And a donation from Aqua it says, please name the chat. The cat chat was right. You can't blindly trust this man, my dear YouTube watchers. And chat we trust. Um, yeah. So word of advice: be very dubious about what chat says. Chat is occasionally right. But this is kind of like monkeys and typewriters, right? So uh, be aware uh, that if you do take chat's advice, you should be double checking it yourself. Uh, whereas my advice is always 100% correct with no mistakes ever. So you should just assume that my advice is correct. Okay, good. Uh, he wants to war China. A little early for me warring, but thank you for the offer. There's a great library. All right, we're gonna move to here. I'm gonna escort the unit for the same reason. I don't want the barb to spawn and steal it. Might not even be a camp there. They might have cleared it. They did clear it. So I'm being super cautious of a camp that's not there anymore. Um, that is something to be aware of. Your camp, uh, when they clear a camp, it won't give you a notification that camp is gone. Uh, so you just see it there forever until uh, you go scout it. We're gonna shoot the spear. Um, one of the benefits of shooting a guy in a camp is if the camp is empty and a barbarian spawns, it will stay in the camp. It won't come roaming around. So sometimes you can control barbarian movement a little bit by killing the guys in the camp. In single player, barbs don't spawn and move in the same turn. Well, then we'll take this as a multiplayer tutorial then because they can do that Tribute elsewhere. Received. So you got to be careful about that. Aqua says, Oracle donates for that. He's bringing up some long dead history that has no relevance to anything whatsoever, Aqua. But I thank you for the donation. All right, here we are. We're where we want to be. Let's go ahead and settle the city. I don't know that they will move units there anymore. Probably still move units to here. I'm a little bit concerned I'm settling too close to here. All right, so the AI is going to get pissy about this. The question is, do I want to do this? Do I want to settle this now or wait? I think I want to settle it now anyways. And I may get a negative modifier. Work the growth tile. We're on a hill. Let's start off with the pyramid. See how it's 10 as opposed to 20, even though they cost the same? It's because you get a half off your shrine bonus uh, for being... Uh, for being uh, piety. So we're gonna settle the city on a hill. Why this location? Let's talk this location. So I wanna to grow to these tiles before the AI has a chance to get them. I also wanna block cities the AI can plant too close to me. And if you look, he has a city right here. He's gonna have a hard time settling in between us unless he settles right here. This gives me two tiles away from the salt, which is the contested resource, the resource that either of us could get if they settle at a certain time. This is on a hill. On a hill is both uh, more defensible in terms of combat strength, uh, but also gives you better range for archer shooting out of there, adjacent to these tiles. So it's gonna grow very quickly to the salt in these wheat tiles. I still get my other resource over here this is on a river uh, so and I'll get the river bonuses from that this is a very very nice little city location and also steals by settling here as opposed to back a little bit further it steals tiles from the city state so I don't have to worry about the city state growing to tiles that I want to work or at least less of them and it gives me room to plant cities a little bit more uh, where I want around here I would like Kalish this game but I'm not sure if that's gonna be a realistic thing with the AI right here or not all right Production online for better settler production. Let's hear Let's get yelled at by uh, Polynesia. Oh, he didn't yell at me this turn. That's good. Keep killing that. I'm going to come in here. Uh, I have only one more settler to build after this. Is it worth improving the iron? That's a good question. I guess I will. And why I'll do it is because I want to get on the iron so I can improve the truffles afterwards. They grow to truffles in four turns. This way I can improve the iron and then work, then immediately improve the truffles so I can settle more cities uh, at a very aggressive pace and keep them growing. So the thing is that this I want these cities to grow as much as possible. If I didn't have the silver online right now, I'd be at zero happiness. So just FYI. All right, uh, let's come over this way. Yeah, Polynesian units over here. They could be clearing the camp, but they might be thinking about settling some cities over here. I don't want that. Okay. Keep clearing this guy. Start a mine here, six turns, a little bit slow. This is uh, standard speed though. We chopped to begin with those early production boosts. This is 20 production boosts, shaves five turns off that shrine, which is great. I wanna have a look over here. Let's do a quick radar, make sure there's not like a shit ton of barbs or something. It doesn't look like there is. Uh, let's go here. I would love to settle a city right there. 
can buy Kalish, still gets the marble. It's going to block my uh, my other the other uh, AI from settling. It's still on a hill. It's fairly defensible, and I'm not. These hills in the second ring out here aren't great for defense because it gives them uh, terrain bonuses when they attack into me, and probably still leaves me room to settle somewhere else. Alternatively, I could do against this mountain, and then get another city in here. Would let me have four cities. I could even do a fifth later on for this first, except the city would be extraordinarily weak. So, some thoughts about that. I'm not entirely sure where I want to settle that city yet. We'll have to think about that. All right. Finished calendar. Let's go ahead and pick up Mandate of Heaven. I would like to get a faster religion. This is going to give me one more faith per turn. How long till we grow? We have no culture until this uh, till this um, shrine finishes. So we're gonna start work on a farm over here just to help with that growth. Okay. Yeah, I have very poor four city locations right now. We're but this is a good spot. We're crammed in the, the the tip of a peninsula. So the only other thing I'd like to do is meet the other players, and uh, we're not doing a particularly good job at that right now. All right, we're gonna just. I want to see. I want to see where their units are, so we're just going to come over here in case we have some uh, stuff coming our way. Settle f if you can. There's, there's, if you're settling Liberty, it doesn't always make sense to settle as far away as you can. Sometimes it makes sense to settle the cities quickly and just get them started. But if you're settling something like Tradition or Piety, oftentimes it's better to settle further away first and then settle the other one in so you can define your borders. Because if you if I planted my first city like right here, and then by the time I get my second settler down here, yeah, it's a little bit further away, but I might just lose the spot entirely by doing that. So. All right, um, let's do a couple things first. Let's radar for barbs. Did they clear this camp? Camp is not cleared yet. There is a unit. No, there isn't. All right, let's move the settler down this way. Um, if I want to go here, that's off river is the other downside of that. I could settle there. That's on river. Have to buy Kalish still, but that's okay. It's farther from the marble, less likely to get it. I think I'm going to settle an off off river city, which is a little bit painful, but I think I'm going to. The only other thing that I should maybe consider is where one, two, three, four. If I settle, yeah, if I settle there, it blocks all their city spots. So they can settle here, though. I don't want them settling there. All right, I am going to settle here then to block them. I can buy the tiles later. I'm going to have more gold than I would versus human players versus AI players because they trade a lot for gold. Clear, clear the camp again. We'd like to clear it entirely, and we might do that soon. Well, let's wait. All right, growing here next turn. We're production focused. Good. All right. Move your friggin' scout. All right. The borders of chat was right. This is was as in past tense. And this is this is pretty standard. Uh, barbs tend to spawn about the same pace you can kill them with a single single uh, range unit. So I'm not at all surprised that that's happening as it is. Uh, I'm gonna work production here till we grow and get some better tiles. Let's get the monument out next. Yeah, at this stage, if you're playing, if I was playing multiplayer, Kuba would show up with archers to suicide into me for no apparent fucking reason. This scout is being really annoying. It's in my way. All right, anything else I need to worry about right now? No. Come on, Kabul, give me another worker. I'm worried that this having my border so close flags this tile as something they'll never approach and therefore they won't move there. I don't know if that's true or not. We might not get another worker steal, but we'll see. We'll do some testing. I'll take double promotions of the same type because again, when you fight AI, it really, really helps to have uh, ranged or logistics or both. Um, versus players, I'd probably take cover. But maybe this early in the game, I might not. I might do what I did there. Just take the same one. All right, let's go here. Farm there. Border expansion is six turns. Start on this luxury in a moment. Okay. Finish this for settler production. We only have five more turns of settler production, but let's get our value out of that. The less turns we spend, the, the problem with settlers and why you want to maximize your production tiles in the early game to get settlers out outside of luxuries is because settlers. When you're building settlers, you can't grow your city, and the growth in your capital is extraordinarily important to the outcome of the game. So. Why do I why do I pr improve like this iron tile? Yeah, I'll grow to it, and that would be nice for production focus. But mostly because I want those settlers done with as soon as possible, so I can build things like granaries. All right, what do we decide there? It's not a happy spot for me. 
I hate flatland cities, and I hate flatland cities versus uh, adjacent to the AI. Statue of Zeus, take that shot. We're no longer gaining experience from that, so literally as soon as I can get rid of that, uh, the better. Okay. All right, let's get our luxury online. So uh, when I settle the city, I don't go unhappy for too long. Why is a flatland city bad? Because you lose the production. When you settle on a hill, so when you settle on a tile, you get the yield of the tile. So it didn't didn't know about this. So we will get another worker. Awesome. Um, so let's let's talk about that. So if you settle on a cow, settling on a cow is fine. Settle on a cow, you get the three food from the cow. So and your city produces one food. So. We'll, so this tile right here, so okay, let me explain this how this works. When you settle a city, it gives you two food and one hammer on that city tile. And if there's adjacent, uh, if there's more, if there's more production on that tile, either of those two resources, you'll get those as well. So if you settle on a three food tile, you'll get the two food from your city itself, one extra food from it being a three food tile, and you'll get the one hammer from settling the city. If you settle on a hill which has two hammers, you get the two food for settling a city and the one hammer for settling a city and an additional hammer for settling on a two production uh, uh, outcome like with your city. If you settle on iron, you get that extra production from having iron. If you settle on, um, what's, what's another three food tile, right? If you settle on like grassland bison or something, uh, you're going to get that too. So the benefit is you get a yield tile, you get free yield at the early part of the game that you don't have to pay anything for, as well as getting a combat bonus. Now thinking of, maybe I should, oh yeah, I want to settle on here because I want to get Kalish. All right, so we are going to go here. The downside of this city versus this city is I don't get Kalish. And I'm kind of not thrilled about that because I'm gonna have to buy that tile, and I bet you it's gonna be more than 100 on this on this game speed. So, all right. I want to clear this camp for the gold. Maybe I'll get lucky and a barb won't spawn there, or maybe a coastal barb would have spawned last turn or something, but I don't think so. Embassy, sure. Yeah. Okay. We are gonna clear this camp. Awesome. Right before this, he would have done it too. 25 gold, it's a big deal here. We're going to settle this city. Oh, we're two gold off. Can we get two gold anywhere? Not right now. All right, let's go there and there. How long? Two turns till border growth. Perfect, we'll go there. I'm going to work gold. I'm minus three right now. I'm going to lose a production to work a little bit more gold. So I have a chance of getting that tile. All I have to do is meet one more city state or one more player. If I go meet in the Banza Congo, I can get that. And I want to do that. I want to buy this tile. All right, we can't grow right now, so we'll just work production. Or rather, our growth is severely, you get quarter, when you're unhappy, you lose 75% uh, of your growth. So again, if I had another production tile here, I don't really. I would consider doing that too. Okay. Sell a monument. I don't really want to sell a monument right now. Terracotta and Hanging Gardens. I think I can just meet the city-state. Apparently not quite yet. Alright, we can bring this unit down now. Uh, next turn is going to grow. We're going to chop this. We already talked about why this makes a, a rough terrain tile into a uh, open terrain tile so my borders will expand there quicker and as well as the fact it's a plains tile so I don't lose any yield. We'll put one turn on a farm here, just cancel it so I can do that cheaper later but I'm going to be setting up for the salt. We'll heal here. Okay. Oh, we're friends. We can sell for flat gold. Right. Duh. Thanks. Oh, he just built Karakata. Uh, I don't really want to give him silver though. Can I give him iron? How much can I get from this? Is it 80 or I, don't, I don't remember these. It will work as it stands. I should have been selling iron earlier. I don't know what it, what the value is, but I'm fine with 90 on that. You guys can probably tell me what it is on quick speed. I'm gonna buy the tile that actually gives, makes me happy, which is fantastic. I'm gonna work the faith right away because I want to get uh, I want to get to the uh, 90. 90 was good. Okay. 60 is quick speed. Okay. I'll try selling it more. I mean, there's other people I could sell iron to, maybe. Oh, they went piety as well. That's annoying. How about two iron for two gold per turn? No, you just want four iron for free. That's very generous of you. How about you? You want some iron to kill up China with? 
I only have one. I'd still take one for one. Cool. You want you want to buy one per turn, Polynesia? I could sell you one for right now. Actually, I just sell it to you right now. Want one more iron? For 45? Okay, cool. I'm going to keep the other two because I like to build swordsmen versus the AI because they upgrade all the way through the eras and are quite good as blocker units. Okay. Alright, done settlers. I can actually grow my city again. Three popping a bunch of settlers is really painful. Uh, but versus the AI, I care about those uh, settlement locations more, and I know I'll catch up in the late game versus other players I might not. Let's meet the city state. I almost pledged them. That's a habit for multiplayer, but I didn't, thankfully. This city would be really nice to grow to pop uh, two, but I'm not going to. I'm going to work Kalish until I get my, my profit, which is quite a long time to not be uh, working anything. See, my city starts to starve. Uh, we're going to settle this guy right there. And my city is starving, so we need to fix that immediately. Uh, now we have to work really crappy tiles, unfortunately, because uh, no no gold or production out of that, because we need to grow. We're going to get a granary right off the bat. Happiness so I can keep growing. Let's bring this guy down this way. And I like our starting area right now. I'm a little I'm, I'm a little annoyed that this is flat land. I guess I could have settled here, but I would have lost the, the marble. And I, if I settled north one, I would have lost uh, the, uh, the, hill, the city in here, and I need another river city over there. So, all right. 